Fadal. Going down into the sajda on the hands. You need to be a bit louder. You need to be closer to the microphone. Okay. Going down into sajda on the hands. He used to place his hands on the ground before his knees. He used to instruct likewise saying when one of you performs sajda he should not kneel like a camel but should place his hands before his knees indeed all praises you to allah and my peace and blessings be upon his messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam this is now going to the sujood and after you finish Sami Allah Riman Hamida and you did your adhkar in the upright position, the adhkar that we have taught you, starting from Rabbana wa lakal hamdu hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fika ma yuhibu rabbuna yarda or Rabbana lakal hamd or Allahumma Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Then after that, we're going to make the takbirah of the sujood with raising up of the hands. And you could do that, or you don't have to do that because it's, you see, after you say Sami Allah, now you raise up your hands and Allahu Akbar to go down for the sujood. And we said you do it either with the takbirah or before or after. Going down to the sujood now, do we go with our hands landing first, or do we go with our knees as some people would do? So he had put the title here to show you that what he's adopting, Shaykh Rahmatullah Ali, from the hadith of the Prophet. And that is, he used to put his hands before his knees. And he used to command doing that. He's saying, if one of you is to prostrate, then let him not to do the prostration and kneel down like the ba'ir. Ba'ir is the camel. And let him put his hands before his knees. Five. Now, this is the issue regarding that, which is, Hadith Abi Huraira, radiallahu anhu. Let him put his knees before, sorry, his hands before his knees. Now, uh, how do we know about the camel? The camel has got four legs, okay? Four legs. When the camel goes down, okay, he goes down with his front. He goes down. My internet is not stable. Okay, when he goes down, the camel, that's the four, he goes down with the front. Then the, 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 the other two will go back, to go down. So he's got four, imagine now, four legs. So the camel goes down with his first, not the, the, the front one, and then he will go with the, the back ones. Okay, that's where the confusion is. So if, <clears throat> if, if, we're going to look at the camel as a human being that the front is uh, uh, the, the hands and the back are the legs. We're going to say, oh, he goes down with his hands first. Okay? But not correct. Because as we know from the scholars of the Lugha, the Arabs, that all the Watl Arba, the four legged animals, okay? Four legged animals, the ones who go on to four. Okay, like the dog, like all of those, like they uh, all you could walk on four. These are four legs, there's no hands, and their knees are in the front. They don't say the front hands, in the front legs. So the camel, if you look at it, the front one, mashallah, it's got a massive, massive, like, uh, 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 like, a, like our knee, you know, something that would protect him when he goes down. That's the one is called a rukba. A rukba. Okay? So the camel, he lands with his knees first. As we are praying, we're being commanded not to follow or imitate any animal, whether it is one legged, two legged, or four legged. We're not allowed to imitate the donkey. We're not allowed to imitate the crow. We're not allowed to imitate the hen. We're not like that, to imitate the rooster, the cock. And we're not allowed to imitate the monkey. We're not allowed to imitate the dog. 
and here we're not allowed to imitate camel. We're not allowed to, to, to imitate animals. So when the camel lands with his front, where he lands on his knees, we differ from him, we land on our hand. Okay? So, and the hadith is clear. He says, let him uh, put his hands before his knees. Now, where is the confusion that took place that some of the scholars, they say like, Sheikh Ibn Baz, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, it actually triggered from the time of Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi. Ibn al-Qayyim, he had said that the hadith had been mistakenly narrated by the narrator, and he had been confused, and he put, instead of putting the hands on, on front, instead of putting the legs before the hands, he put the hands first before the legs. Because Ibn al-Qayyim, he, 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 he basically, everybody's a human being. He had mistakenly didn't realize that the four-legged animals, their knees are in the front. Number one. So he lands with his knees. So we land on our hands, number one. Number two, and that is to, to say that the narrator had made the, you know, swapping this in front, of, instead of this, we're going to open a door here for anybody to say, well, this hadith is not correct. It's actually the narrator has done something wrong. It's supposed to be that way. So we cannot just open that gate and just say that, oh, the narrator in qalaba ala rawi, not Arabic. Qalaba means like it is, it is, it did not really make it correct. Sometimes it's correct, <coughs> but we cannot open that door. Number three, uh, the Prophet, وسلم, this is going to be talking logic wise. Prophet Sallallahu masjid is made of pebbles. Pebbles are very hard. Okay? Regardless of how soft they are, they're going to be hard. It's not like the carpet. Now, if we're going to be logically adopt the opinion of landing on our knees first, you try it. You put some stones and you land with your knees on your stones. What's going to happen? You're going to have a kneecap. You're going to have a knee shattered straight away. One, because you're going to land like a boom with your knees. And that's going to hurt your knees. But because some people land on their knees because it's a carpet, okay, that's why they don't feel the pain. But if you want to have pebbles, you will fail. You will know definitely that this is not the correct opinion. Also, if you ask a doctor, uh, and I have asked a doctor, and plus I had an old man who used to be in our masjid, um, and still alive, mashallah, alhamdulillah. And he said to me that, you know, uh, uh, when he had heard my talk regarding this issue, he said, I went to the doctor of my bone, bone doctor, consultant, and I said to him, I do, you know, something wrong with my pain in my, my, my knees. So he tested my knees and he said to him, it's because you will pray. SubhanAllah. And he's a Catholic doctor, he's not a Muslim, a non-believing doctor. It's because you pray. SubhanAllah. So he said to him, because you pray, and that prayer of his that made it that kneecap, because he was landing on his knees. So when he realized from my talk that, oh, you land with your hands, much, much better because you land softly with your hands and the knees goes first. Uh, after. When you go up, the knees goes first, then the hands goes after. So it's the opposite. So when you go down, okay, I'm going to put that now to you so you can just see what I'm talking about as a demonstration here. You know, you could tell that if the person landed like this, he's like landing like, you know, it's a camel. Okay, and then he goes like this. That's a camel. That's a camel how he does. If the camel, if you see the camel, the camel does like this. Okay, that's how he does. So the person should be landing like this. So he goes with hand like that, landing slowly, and then his knees follow. So his knees will land slowly, and it will not cause him an injury. When you finish the two sajda and you get up, as we're going to see, it's the opposite. <coughs> so after the jalsa of tashahud or the jalsa of the second sajda, let's say the, second, the first rakah, you put your hands first. And we're going to learn as well. We're going to make like uh, kneading the, the, kneading the, the dough. The dough. It's like you know, making the bread. I don't know if your mother does like this when they're kneading the dough. Okay. So we do like this. Okay. Like that. That's a fist. You could do it like this if you want. Like that, or like this. Usually it's like this, more comfortable. This is how, this is the, the mothers, they don't do that, but they do like this sometimes. This is with a fist. 
okay? Then you, and then knees first, then hands second. Okay, that's how you do it when you need to get up. So we understood now the first point, second point, and third point. First point, we said that to uh, understand how the camel lands, because we know the camel now. Number two as well, we can't say that this narrator had done something like this. We will open the gate for people to say whatever they like. Number three is that common sense as well. Remember the pebbles in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this point, which is the pebbles, is being pointed out by our Sheikh Mashur uh, uh, In my knowledge, I haven't read any scholar had talked about that, which is that the pebbles of the masjid there, if you want to try to land with your knees, you're going to be a, a disaster. Right. Now let's just go to the footnote that we have number five, which is after you have finished, you say, well, number five according to the Arabic language. It says there has been narrated by Abu Dawood. Can you see that? Okay, right. And then he says here, and uh, and it says here, and وصححه عبد الحق في الأحكام الكبرى وقال في كتاب التهجد. And he said, إنه أحسن. It is better isnad than the one before it. He means hadith of Wa'il al Mu'arid lahu, the one which is. Can you read from that? Are you following me, Abdul Razak? Yes. Can you read from that, please? On that note, uh, in, in our book is footnote number three. Okay. So Abu what want, Dawood, what, what I want is from where it says, and know for a fact that the differing of the ba'ir, the camel, that's from the point where it says the last word is al irwa in my Arabic language. After that, the hadith, the hadith of wa'il, which is the other way round, knees beforehand. In fact, the, la the later hadith as well has been contradictory to this hadith so, and the preceding one is neither authentic in Isnad nor in meaning. As I have explained in Sisilatul Hadith al Dwaifa, number 929 al Al-Irwa. 929 al Dwaifa explains it properly then. We have no doubt whatsoever. And I know it for a fact, okay? Number of students of knowledge of Sheikh Ibn Rufaymin, who are highly like, for example, Sheikh Salim al-Tawil, well known, he says that this is the correct thing. That the opinion is not to go on your knees, so he's actually going against the Sheikh and going the Sheikh al-Albani. Okay, now, I know for a fact, go ahead. It should be known that the way to differ from the camel is to place the hands before the knees, because the camel places his knees fast. A camel's knees are in his forelegs, as defined in Lisan al-Arab, in other books of the Arabic language. And as mentioned by Tuhawi in Mishkul, in Mishkal, in Mushkil Athkar and Sharh al-Ma'an al-Athar. Mushkil al-Athar. Mushkil al-Athar and Sharh al-Ma'an al-Athar. Correct. Also Imam Qasim al-Saraqusti, rahimahullah, narrating the Kharib al-Hadith, with his nod, with Sahih is not. Abu Huraira's statement, no one should kneel the way a runaway camel does. And then added, this is in sajda. He is saying that one should not throw oneself down as a runaway or untamed camel does. Hurriedly and without calmness, but he should go down calmly, placing his hands fast, followed by his knees and an explanatory marfu' hadith has been narrated in this regard. He then mentioned the hadith above. Above. Yes. As for Ibn al-Qayyim, nah. as for Ibn al-Qayyim, extremely strange statement, these words are incomprehensible and not understood by the experts of the language. This is the, this is the, these are the words of Ibn al-Qayyim. Yes. Not, it cannot be common sense. And the Duga, they don't know it. Go on. It is answered by the sources that we have mentioned and also many others which cannot be can be consulted. I've also expanded on this in the refutation against Sheikh at which may be published. Right. End of quote. And Jazakallah khair. Now, if I want to go through the refutation of the theme, then we're going to go to 
we have a half a lecture. So we will leave that if you want. Um, a repetition of me regarding this issue. Because Alhamdulillah, we know now, correct if it needs to go with the hands. But it is kitab, which is asl of the salah. The asl. The asl means where the book is coming from. Remember, we talked about the asl. The asl is Right, I would urge you because in this asal, the Sheikh discusses this issue. So the asal is actually like this. There's three volumes. Hmm. Right, these are the asal. In this asal, the Sheikh discusses this issue of refuting the uh, Ibn Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi. Okay, and he does in about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 pages. Right. Now we go into the following subtitle. I don't know if you got that subtitle. The description of the two. You have that one, Abdul Razak? Yes, the sajda described. Oh, go ahead. He would support himself on his palms and spread them, put his fingers together and put them towards the qibla. Uh, also, he would put. There is one before that, the Sheikh. He's, he, and he used to say that the hands, they prostrate, like the face prostrate. There's one before that. Oh, sorry, I've skipped that. Sorry, I do apologize. Oh, he, no still on. Yes. he also used to say, verily, the hands prostrate as the face prostrates. So when one of you places his face on the ground, he should place his hands, and when he raises it, he should raise them. Okay, so that's, alhamdulillah says us that the hands prostrates like the face was prostrate. And when you make sujood, there are seven limbs that have to be made touching the ground. Those seven limbs, we're going to discuss them, inshallah, later on. But just to hasten the benefit, this is, okay, one, two, okay, and the head and the nose is three, the knees, four and five, and the two, Toes, the feet, six and seven. Again, one, two, and the head and the nose is three, considered to be one. And then it's me and the left knee, that makes it five. And of course, the toes, which is the beast here, makes it six and seven. Okay, problem. Go we go to the surgeon now. No, actually, this is, oh, no, 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 this is, after that, the hadith, which is, and used to, after the, after the one you just read now, what is after it? In my book here is going to the next subtitle of the Sajda Described. Okay. We it's just the finished the, 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 the Sajda Described, okay, the Sajda Described is supposed to be before that hadith, but never mind. Do you understand me? The Sajda Described before that hadith that you just narrated. Yeah. Okay, the, the, correct, the yeah. correct place of the description is before that, okay? Because uh, the first one is just to go on the hands, and it's being discussed. This one has nothing to do with the hands, but it's involved putting the hands as well, but also it involves that the hands with the face and all of this. So it's part of the description, part of putting the hands first. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, Sajda described. He would support himself on his palms and spread them, put his fingers together and point them towards the Qibla. Also, he'd put them in his, his palms level with his shoulders and sometimes level with his ears. He would put his nose and forehead firmly on the ground. Okay. He stop. said to... Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Just up to you. Just make sure that you understand what I'm saying. This is the word... Okay, says here, Sifat Sujood, the description of the prostration, which you have read the title. First hadith in it, Makana Yaqoola used to say, bury the hands, the prostrate like the face. So it starts from there. And also in my old book, I've got Sifat Sujood, which is here on there. That's why I just said, maybe the translation, I made it one after the hadith. That's number one. Number two, that is when we make the Sujood, he says, he's to 
basically depend upon, let's just say I'm on the table now, making to do. Okay, that's the table. And I'm making my to do. So placing the hands, that's why it depends upon them. And these hands towards the table. Okay. And he used to say here, make these fingers together. Making fingers together is like when you make the arm. Exactly the same. There's no difference between the haram and this one. So it is not extremely together like that, and it's not open, it's like normal. It's not normal, my hands, it's like this will be together, and this one is just always away from it. Thumb. So this is like, so these are will be together always, and this one is, but it's not like that. Because this is not comfortable, not even comfortable. So this is, so it's not like this, like this, and it's not like that. Okay, so. So this is now, and then he says, towards the Qibla. Now when he prostrates as well, he puts his head in such a way, in his hand, that these hands will be in parallel, okay, to his, okay, it says here, the shoulders, or parallel to his ears. Okay, so that, this one, the thumb, either in parallel to the earlobe, or they're in parallel to the shoulders. Okay, so this one will reach the upper hand, the upper ears, the upper of the ear, the like that, or a bit down. Okay, so what different people they do? They put the hands away from the head, like that. Okay, or they put it too much there. Okay, that's number two. And on, on he says here, he puts the nose and the face. You did not put the nose. Your prayer is in bed. Go ahead. He said to one who prayed badly, when you prostrate, then be firm on your prostration. And in one narration, when you prostrate, put your face and hands down firmly until all your bones are relaxed in the proper places. Mm. He, he also used to say, there, are no, there is no prayer for the one whose nose does not feel as much of the ground as the forehead. And this hadith is important. It tells us here that if the person did not touch his nose onto the ground, his prayer is invalid because he said, La salata. And here the negation is for the core of the salah. La salata liman la tusibu anfuhu min al ardi ma yusibu al jabin. So, la salata, that means the whole salah will be invalidation. It will be invalidated, it will be negated. La salata, la salata, if you don't do this. So your nose has to touch the ground, and we find so many people touch with a forehead, and their nose is up above the ground; it's not touching. Go ahead. He he used to put his knees. He used to put his knees and toes down firmly, point with the front of the toes towards the qibla, put his heels together, keep his feet upright, and ordered likewise. And keep his feet upright and and he would put his heels together, yes, you said, right. And he would keep something. his feet upright and ordered likewise. Now there's something else to that as well. He used to wayaftahu asabiahuma. He would separate between his toes. Does it say that? Mm, it doesn't say he just keep his feet. In order, like it was only point with the front of the toes towards the qibla. That's all what is in the on the okay. Let me translate it according to what in the Arabic here because it's a very important point here. As one well, says, here he used to place his two knees and his, his feet on the ground and he would uh, make his toes facing the qibla and he would mm -hmm. put his heels together, yes. That's correct. And he will put his feet upright. And this is how he's being commanded. After that, and he used to separate between his toes. Okay, separate. And I'm going to show you in a minute or two. And this is number nine, separating his toes. This is Abu Dawood at Tirmidhi. And he made it sahih. Do you have that footnote for that? Dawood at Tirmidhi, Ibn Najah, and Nasai. Dawood, Abu Dawood at Tirmidhi. Nasai, Ibn Najah. You have that one? Footnote number. Okay, when it says the last, the last point, it says what he and he was commanded with. Yes, what does that footnote for that? What does it refer? To? Number fourteen. 
Yeah, show me. What is it? What does it say? Number 14 says, Tirmidhi and Siraj Hakim declared it Sahih and Dahabi agreed. Well done. Now, is, is there any footnote after that? What's the following footnote? Before that, but not after that. Yes, That's no, the last no one. one before, after that. There's no after that? No. Ah, so you have to add it. Your book maybe is the old version. So when you need to add, and he used to separate between his toes. And there's a footnote, which is could put number, number 15 now. And that is Abu Dawood at Tirmidhi. He made a Sahih and a Nasa'i ibn Majal. Okay? Yeah. Right. And it says Yaftakh. He explained the word Yaftakh. So that means he would bend them towards the, you know, he bends them. I'm going to show you now, inshallah. Right. Let me just finish, first of all, the description and we'll go describe it. Go on. Go ahead. Finish, and then hence, yeah. okay, hence, these are the seven limbs on which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would prostrate the palms, the knees, the feet, and the forehead and nose, counting the last two as one limb in prostration. As he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have been ordered to prostrate. In one narration, we have been ordered to prostrate on seven bones on the forehead. And he indicated. Like this, he did like this. Indicated, pointed yeah, to the nose. By moving, his, by moving his hand around his nose, the hands in one version, the palms and knees and the toes, and not to tuck up the garments and hair. Right. Let's just explain this hadith. Basically, that the Prophet saw them. He has made the nose and the forehead is to be one limb. So he said, "I have been commanded." Or in another narration, we have been commanded to prostrate on seven. Then he pointed to the jabha. Jabha is the forehead. And when he pointed to the jabha, he moved his finger to the nose like that. So this is called one limb. Jabha and your nose. The forehead and the nose. And then your hands, the knees, and the end of your feet. And then he says, Wala nakfitu. Nakfitu thiyaban wala sha'aram. Nakfitu thiyab is that with, if you, for example, have a, let's say, a cloak, we don't really roll it. So, the kaftu thiyab, do you have a footnote there which says that for the kaftu thiyab? You could read it in English for me. Number two. Uh, to draw them in, uh, to draw them in, and prevent them from being scattered, meaning together the garment or hair with the hands for ruku and sujood nihaya. And this right. forbidden is not only during prayer. The majority of scholars, including, include tucking in the hair and garment before prayer in the prohibition. This is further strengthened by his forbidding men to pray with their hair tied, which follows later. Right. Uh, right, Ma, we're going to be talking about, inshallah, the Ma'qus al-Sha'al in a minute, which is the tied up hair. So the, basically, this person, when he prays, let's he's got a cloak. He does not gather the cloak with himself and let the cloak prostrate with you as well. You don't really gather it. So you leave it, it's prostrate with you. And also, the kaf as well, it means like this. So if this person did like this, it's not... By the way, inside the salat means that you come to the salat like this. It's not, it's not, some of the people understand that we are forbidden to, to do that while we are praying. No, no, no. It's you come to the prayer like this, or you are in the prayer doing like this. It's both correct. So this is called kaf. That means you're not letting the garment to be correct, you know, all fully at that where you could really prostrate. This happens as well in the trousers. Some people fold them up. So they should be unfolded as well. Should be unfolded because all the all your clothes are straight with you. Should not be doing like this. It should not be doing like that in the what, before you enter the prayer. Should be using this before you enter the prayer. So this is prohibited. And also here a shar kaf to shar. Okay, let's talk about the kaf to shar when we come to that point. Please go ahead. And used to say. He also used to say, when a slave prostrates, seven limbs prostrate with him, his face, his palms, his knees, and his feet. 
Well done. And he said about a man, he said about a man who was praying with his hair tied behind him, his example is surely like that of someone who prayed with his hands bound behind his back. He also said that that is the saddle of the devil, where the devil sits, referring to the nose in the hair. SubhanAllah. Right, now go to the footnote there for this tied up like his cuff, tied up, and like his tied up. Number five, tied up or plated. Yeah, says here, Ibn Athir said, there's a point there. Uh, that's number six, yeah. Muslim Abu, Abu Awana Ibn Hibban, Ibn Al Athir says, the meaning of this hadith is that while his hair loose, it will fall on the ground when in sajda. Hence, the man will be rewarded for the prostration of the hair. However, if the hair is tied, it is effectively as though it did not prostrate, for he compared him to be someone whose hands are shackled together, since they would, not, since they would then not lie on the ground in sajda. It will seem that this instruction is limited to men and does not apply to women, as Shawkani has quoted from his, from Ibn al-Arabi. Right. Well done. So, Alhamdulillah, that's mixed with us. The men, sometimes have long hair. No problem to have long hair as long as you're covering, because you don't want to be fitting up with the women as well. I don't know who you're imitating. I don't think the Prophet saw Sallam. But these people got long hair, dot, tie it up. If you tied it up, loosen it in the prayer. If you tied it up, loosen it in the prayer. And here the Sheikh says that this is not only in the prayer, okay? This is not only in the prayer. The person should not, should not be just, this is not supposed to be all, it should be like always loosening. But if you tied it up, so if you had it tied it up in the prayer, loosen that. Now, he says that the shaitan goes into that knot of yours when you have tied it up, okay? Now, also, he said that this is, according to what we believe, it is only for the men, not the women. The women, what they're not allowed to do is the axe, which is the takwir, to make the hair tied up that way, to make the hump. But the women to have plated hair, no problem about that. Plated or small ones, big ones, doesn't matter. But to have, tie it up and make it like, you know, they make it like a tower on top of that head like this. You could tie it up here, no problem. Tie it up here, tie it up here. But in this one, that's not allowed as well for the women, whether it is to do with um, in the prayer or outside the prayer. And worse will be as well to show your hair and walk nakedly, showing yourself with that. Right, so I understand now. Let's just go now, um, pull, finish the description, and we'll do the sujood, inshallah, in, in practice. Fadal. He will not yeah. rest his forearms on the ground, but would raise them above the ground and keep them away from his side, such as the whiteness of his armpits could be seen from behind. And also, such that if a small lamb or kid wanted to pass under his arms, it would have been able to do so. If, if something like a kid says, pass through him, say it again. If it, such that if a small lamb or kid wanted to pass under oh. his arms, it would have been able to do so. A kid, I don't know where it's coming kid from, but the small lamb, yes, lamb, lamb, yeah, the lamb, you know, like the uh, goats, yes? Yeah. Yeah, but not, I don't know where the kid's coming from. So there's no such thing as called kid. No, the kid is not correct, but the small, small baby goat, okay? If she wanted to pass in front of him, she would have done so. Okay. But, so now let's just talk about this. He says he, he did not make, when he makes the jewel, his hand like that. He brings it up from the ground. So this is not this. This is this could have been the, the, the beast, the lion. You know, he makes a jewel like this, a lion, all on there, okay? Like when you make the jewel, you have to raise them up from the ground, not to make them touch the ground. Come on. And he says, and he used to uh, keep them away from his side. So this is the way. As long as you don't really tease the one who's beside you, you can do to you. But if you are an imam, you can do it. If you do like this, you make the jewel, then a baby goat can pass between your arm here and underneath your body and from the other arm. But if you did like this, it would be difficult. 
So that's how it passes, okay? Between you, it will pass. That to the extent that is the whiteness of his underarm will be shown. That tells us as well for those people who recite Quran from the book, and they do like I've seen them doing, and then they recite in the Quran like this, and they do like this. They will not be applying the Sunnah because as soon as they do like this, it's going to fall out from them, so it's not going to be applicable. And we say that's why we say we don't really recite from the Quran, recite from your memory. So this will, as I said, will tie them up. You can't really move, move. Some of them now they have mashallah small Quran they put it in the pocket, but still you put it in the pocket under the pocket. We talked about that issue in my lectures regarding the Raweeh prayer. Right. So Alhamdulillah, now we understand uh, what we need to do regarding our arms. Let's continue, please. He would do this to such an extent that one of his companions said, we used to feel sorry for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of the way he kept his hands away from his sides. Allahu Akbar. That means how tiring for him, the Prophet to do that. Okay. And that is for men and women. Because women, they think they, they have to do like this. Because they don't want to show their, you know, their breast. Okay. That's not correct. Because the women are not supposed to be praying in the presence of non-maharam. They shouldn't be having non-maharam behind them to look at them. Okay, that's why they should be play, praying in either behind the non-maharam behind them or in an area where the walking people, they can't see them because they can't really look at when they prostrate, for example. Uh, so the women, they pray the same thing, men and women. Now, nah, Fadl. He used to all the like white training. When you perform sajda, place your palms on the ground and raise your elbows and be level in sujood. And none of you should spread his forearms like the spreading of a dog. This in is one narration. Is, which is this one. So if you do like this, this is the dog. The dog, he puts his, you know, when he do, the dog does like that, doesn't he? This is really like on the land. So you should do like this, not like that. No, other. In one narration, like a dog spread them. In a separate hadith, none of you should rest arms on the ground the way a dog rests them. He, used, he also used to say, do not spread your arms the way a beast of prey does. A well, beast and a dog arm. is the same thing. If you've seen the lion, how they sit with their, with their hands like this, or their legs, I should say, the front, the front arms. Okay? They sit like this. This is the beast, whether it's a lion or a cheetah or something like that. Go ahead. Rest on your palms and keep your upper arms apart. For when you do all that, every one of your limbs prostrate with you. Okay, right. So let's just now go to the sujood. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. We said that when we go down from we go down on our hands first, then the knees. Our hands are these fingers together. Mine, by the way, this one is always like this. This is the natural life of me. If I do like this, it's going to be hurting me. So that's why it's separate. Some of you, maybe, you know, some of them got like this, but you know, the natural way. You're not really exerting pressure to really put them together. So this is natural for me, and this is natural as well for me for two fingers here. Okay. So I'm pointing towards the Qibla. Okay, and then he says as well that when you put your head, okay, your head is between your hands is like that. Can you see that, yeah? With your head like this. So your hands, this one, the top of it, is in parallel for the top of your ear, or you could go a bit down like that. So like this, or like that. You see, look how the companions, the companions are so precise. You do like this. Can you hear me, guys, or you can't hear me when I'm in the sujood? We can hear you. Oh, okay, you can hear me, alhamdulillah. So, uh, like this. Okay, and then he says, don't put your arm, the uh, elbow, sorry, on the floor like that. This is the beast of the dog. So it should be like this. And don't make them like this. Whether it's a woman or a man, them like this. So even the armpits would show the whiteness. But if you are playing in the jama'ah, don't tease the people who are next to you. Okay? So we got now also the head and the nose are touching. Head and the nose are touching. 
He's approaching to the Qibla. He's away from my arms. They are away from the floor. Okay, now we're coming to the back. These are. Now, right. Let me see. Subhanallah. We need a microphone here. Let's see just if I got this microphone in. Right. Not working. Doesn't matter. I'm going back now. A microphone which is wireless. Right. So I'm going to just be talking while you're looking at my feet. That's my feet. Allah. Okay. Can you mute everybody, please? Yeah. Mute everybody, uh, Hassan. Done, Chair. Because when you, somebody talks, takes a screen out. Okay. That is the sujood. Right? So I'm going to show you a side picture of my toes. That's how my toes look like. Okay? So they are pointing with me towards the Okay? And they are together at the heel. Not like this, this is wrong. Not like this, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Not like this, this is wrong. Like that. Okay, and okay. And I, when he says here that these two be uh, the last thing we added is this. That he's putting it on the floor with this like Sorry, Sheikh, we can't hear you at the moment. What you were just explaining that. Okay, I don't know uh, how far do we reach, but I said that when you press it down, the toes will separate. Sorry, Sheikh, your voice is gone again. We, we can't hear that part when you're speaking. Okay. Can you hear me now? Alhamdulillah, we can. Yeah, it's because it's to do with the phone as well, because I'm far away from the the tethering right so what i did basically i had put my toes underneath the the last one which we added to the book that means you would push the toes underneath when you push the toes underneath it will point towards the kibla plus they will have a space in between them okay that's what it means all right i hope that alhamdulillah i have explained the way that the sujur is proper inshallah and uh, we're going to open now now we're going to just go to the uh, last bit, which is Wujub al-Tumanina, and then we open the question and answer. Please read the following title, small title. The obligation to be at ease in sujood. He sallallahu alayhi wa used to command the completion of ruku and sujood, comparing someone not doing so to the hungry man who eats one or two dates, which are of no use to him. And also saying about him, he is indeed one of the worst thieves among the people. Allahu Akbar. So also the, worst, ruled, the worst thief is the one who steals in his prayer. That's the worst thief. So when he does not complete his sujood, he goes boom, ba, boom. He just touches the ground and goes up. His prayer is invalid. Go ahead. He also ruled that the prayer of one who does not straighten his spine fully in ruku and sujood is invalid as has been mentioned under the ruku and ordered the one who prayed badly to be at ease in his sujood as mentioned before. Okay, so in our little book, which is the Talkhir Siva Salat al Nabi, we find that now we got another pillar to be added to the pillars before, and that is the sujood. So sajda is a pillar, rukun. So sujood is a pillar. Wait, 
Right, let me now summarize from this book what the Sheikh has said of what we just said up to now, up to the Adhkar. He says here the sujood, when you say Allahu Akbar, and that's compulsory, not a rukun. When you say Allahu Akbar, it's not a rukun to go. Allahu Akbar is compulsory, but it's not a pillar. Then he would raise up his hands, and it's compulsory, but it's not a pillar. Then he would say, go down onto his hands. Okay, and he would as well, uh, he would put them before his knees. Second, please. Oh. I can't read the small writing. <laughs> right, and he puts them before his knees, and that's how the Prophet ﷺ commanded. And this is which has been established to be confirmed from the Prophet, and he did forbid for us to imitate the landing of a camel. For verily, he lands on his knees, which are in his front legs. So if he is to prostrate, this is a pillar. He would depend upon his two palms, and he would spread them, but he would make his fingers together, and he would point them towards the Qibla, and he would make his palms in parallel to his shoulders, sometimes in parallel to his ears, which is the earlobes, and he would raise up his elbows from the ground, and that's compulsory, and he would not put them in the ground like the beast, and he would make his nose and his forehead on the ground, and that's a pillar, and he would put his knees and his feet, <clears throat> and he would, oh, and, and those seven limbs are to be a pillar, okay, and then he would put them up, okay, he would put them up, and all of this is to be wajib, compulsory. So we have now a pillar in the sujood, which is the most important. That is, your pillar is the nose and the, okay? And also to have the seven limbs. But is the seven limbs, okay, if the seven limbs are pillars on all of them, let's say, for example, a person who prayed like that, Too far. We do find people praying like this. Where he puts his feet and he prostrates. He prostrates like this. One of his foot is up. Is his prayer invalid? No. Because the limbs here. The only one which we find is to be a pillar is the nose and the head. Because the Prophet said, La salata, and there's no prayer. It is compulsory. So this person, for example, let's say, he was lazy to put one of the hands. He had sinned, but his pillar is not, his prayer is not invalid. It's, for example, his knees, he raised it up a bit, not touch the floor. It's a compulsory, it's not a pillar. But what is pillar? Is the nose and the forehead. Because we mentioned in the hadith, La salata. He would uh, point his fingers towards, uh, sorry, his toes towards the Qibla, and he would put his, sorry, his uh, heels together. Right. Now we, inshallah, uh, go to the Adhkar, not today, but inshallah, in the following month, hopefully, hopefully, there will be no lockdown, inshallah, but I doubt it, because we haven't done anything properly to make sure that we're going to be safe against this virus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and we ask Allah azza wa jalla as well to have mercy upon those people who have died and to grant them shahada inshallah and ask Allah azza wa jalla to, to uh, make the Muslim people uh, understand and pay heed uh, to uh, all of that that has been taking place and to respect and appreciate the blessing that Allah had taken them away, taken them away from them, which is the Masajid now. I mean, yesterday I prayed the Taraweeh night with my family. Um, yani it's not the same as the Masjid. No way. No way when it's... Ramadan is all about socializing, to come together and all of that, especially the Eid is coming as well. Allah Allah.
So uh, now we don't appreciate the na'bah until we've been, you know, been robbed from it. And Allah taken away from us. This na'bah, the blessings of Allah, of the masjid. And the blessings of Allah of this world, the schools. You know, the mothers and the fathers are shutting their head off. Please, schools open. Take our children. We can't really do anything. Allah must start. But let's go ahead, inshallah, uh, to uh, the questions. And as we have talked to you, and when uh, the brother, mashallah, Ahmad, he had told you, do you raise up your hands? And uh, he will straight away give you the go ahead. Father. Ayat, please go. Okay, the hand was raised a second ago. Doesn't matter. If you, you are a sister, you still can ask a question. Uh, if you're a brother, you could still uh, you could ask the question. The, ch the chat, okay, they're writing the messages. Please, we leave that for the sisters. If you want a brother, want to ask, you know, uh, maybe the sisters are shy, but you're allowed as a sister to ask the question on the microphone because your salt, your voice is not our. It's not our. Who says it's our is wrong? But we ask the sister as well, but when she asks the question, to ask it in a way that there is no, you know, uh, you know, basically twisting in it. Basically, that's the main lust will be provoked. Now. Yeah, can I ask a question? I can't raise my hand as a co-host. We'll have to just give the priority to the brothers there. I go hey. Maybe they can't raise up their hands. If you want to... Okay, I'll give you the go-ahead to please, please, everybody, unmute, uh, sorry, mute yourself. Please, everybody, because I'm going to give now to unmute everybody, because I know there's going to be a noise now. So please make sure that your microphone is muted, so you could have the opportunity to unmute yourself without putting the hands up. Yes, I told you. I still going to have some people. Allah <laughs> Mustafa. Allah <laughs> Mustafa. Right now you've got the you've got the right to unmute yourself and go ahead. Maybe you don't know how to raise up your hands. Mute yourself, unmute yourself, and talk. Assalamualaikum. No, there's there's a sister before you. Hang on a second. Father Ayat. Yes, Ayat. Ayat. How do I sit between two sujuds? Brother, brother, let me just go. I go back to the back again to the hands. Uh, I'm, I'm just now, please, Ahmed, unmute Ayat and let us speak. I'm going to do that myself. Yalla. I'm muting, but maybe uh, the brother was muting. Yeah, just one person. I said, I said one person. One person to do it. Don't do it on both of you. Father, Father Lee Ayat, just go ahead. Who's, it, who's muting it? I didn't mute him. Maybe he muted. Sister, I'm unmuting you. Unmute her, please, again. Okay. Okay, can you? Uh, I don't understand that. Right. Right, we'll forget. Because uh, the sister, she was asking a question. The brother came in front of her. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How do I sit between two sujuds? How do I sit between two sujuds? Okay. Yes. So we haven't arrived to that point. We are in the sajda first. <laughs> okay. Between the two sujuds, we really haven't arrived to it because you're going to be explaining another class now. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. By the way, Ayat is a, a female name as well. My daughter is called Ayat. <laughs> Put your hands up. Okay, Hassan, ask your question. And by the way, if you are listening to us, Abdullah and Nasur, Muhammad, Muhammad, you will not be able to talk unless you link your microphone to the video. I asked you, Hassan, to explain that to them. You did not. Can you explain that to them, please? Sheikh, I've sent the message because they can't hear us. Ma message, message doesn't work, ya Habibi. <laughs> but they can't hear us, so how, how can I? <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> They can't hear us. Are you sure you can't hear us? No, because the microphone's muted. They can't hear us, Sheikh. Are you sure? That's what we had that problem before, yes. No, but their, their speaker is not muted. It's, their microphone is muted. Do you understand me? No. Allahu Their speaker is on. Because I, I know that for a fact. Their speaker is on. 
Abdullah, can you hear me, Abdullah? Nasur Mahmoud, can you hear me? What you need to do, you look down, maybe say you've got a mobile. Underneath, it says, oh, there's a, 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 a sign like this. Okay? You click on it, it will join you to the device of yours. Your microphone is not being joined yet. Okay, never mind. Hold on. Sorry about that. No. I'm sorry. When you were demonstrating the um, position of the toes, um, I couldn't hear the audio, but um, you did say that there's a gap between the toes, didn't you? If you could just explain that, that part. I saw how you did it. Just explain that gap, inshallah. If you remember when I said to the, our reciter to add the following, because we did not find in your book the addition that which I added, and that's in the book, the, 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 the new print of it. And we have added the narration is to me from Abu Dawood with Tirmidhi and he made it Sahih and Masayib and Majah. Yaftakh, that his toes is to push them on the ground where they're pointed towards the Qibla. When you push them, they naturally open. They naturally. When you push on something, like this, this is art now, are together. When you push them, look, they go like this, naturally. That's called fatih. Okay? Now, do you understand that, inshallah? Alhamdulillah, very clear. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Go ahead, Sheikh uh, Abdul Razak. Right, my question regarding the women, when it's Seba and the Sujud, because we, some of the women understand that they're the way they, they do the Sujud different to men. So where did they get this one from? Is there any evidence, any hadith or something? Or where is this coming from? Uh, this is coming from the wrong of understanding of some of the fiqh that is coming without a proof. Like for example, when we wash the deceased and we, then we will shroud him, we shroud him with one or two and the best is three wraps they made the women to be five wraps and the five wraps has stemmed from a hadith layla bin tuqaif al thaqafiya which is not authentic that the one of the women the daughter is actually the prophet she's been wrapped by five wraps which is not correct it was three but we do have a general principle based upon a hadith of the prophet Verily, the women are the brothers or the sisters of the brothers. They are, in terms of in front of the law and the rules of Islam, they are the same. Unless that there is something would indicate otherwise. Look how, for example, Um Salama, she understood the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ regarding the garment. Prophet of Allah, he said, ما أسفر الكعبين ففنه. Whatever is below the heels, I'm talking about not the heels, what is this called? The ankle, sorry. But what about the, below the ankles, this one, the ankle. Below the ankle is in, in the hellfire. That means not the garment, the person who's got this garment is in the hellfire. So, Um Salama, she said, Messenger of Allah, where, where are the women? So straight away, he's understanding that this hadith is applicable to men and women. Straight away, she said, what about the women? So the, men, the women, what are they going to do regarding this issue? So should they do as well, raise up their uh, garment above the ankles and show their feet? He said, no, the Prophet of Allah said, your khina shibra. So from the ankles, one hand span. Messenger of Allah, tabdu suquhun, that if they walk, they might show their legs. He said, your khina dira'a. Dira'a is like this. And your dira'a is two hands span. If you measure it, exactly is two hands span. Try to measure it now. From the top of the middle finger, this is the longest one, put your hand span, they spread it as much as you can. And then when you reach to that point, put the other finger, the little one, spread it as much as you can. It has to come to the end of your, which is the, where it goes like this. It is the elbow. It has to. This is the measurement of yourself. So these have two hands. So he said, you're here, you're So two hands span below the ankles. Two hands span. This, this is not from the front. This is from the back. From the front, she will go on top of her face. So she'll have a tail, basically. Long tail, which is two, but not more than the two. Hand span from her ankles. 
What I'm trying to say here, that this hadith understood that it's for the men and the women. So the women, when we say they are in front of the Lord, they're the same. All these hadith regarding raising up the hands and putting the arms like this and putting it, including separating between your arms until the arm is shown, is all of that applicable to female as much as applicable to the male. Okay? Same thing. You're asking the question, where did it come from? Allahu Ta'ala Alam. Because there are, must be a hadith, maybe unauthentic, or it could be a misunderstanding, which I've seen in the books of the fiqh, but I did not trace that up because what is in the sahih is enough for me. So I don't need to go ahead and, and ask why, you know, these people are wrong. But I know from the sahih, it would be enough for me, inshallah. But if you want to go further and further details, you might go into the uh, books of the fuqaha that they will tell you where it is taken from. Maybe it's athar, which is not authentic. Athar. Nah. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Any other questions from the brothers and the sisters? Right. Can you just, Ahmed, look, look, look at all the microphones. Are they muted? Uh, all of them except for Sheikh Abdul Razak at the moment. Okay. I'll mute him now. Right. And let me unmute. Let me just see again. Still. Okay. Can you mute everybody? Mute them, uh, mute them as in. Uh, the inability now to go and unmute yourself. Anybody who ask a question now, go ahead. Sorry, Sheikh. When I muted everybody, it muted you as well. I apologize. Doesn't matter. So, anybody want to ask a question now? Unmute yourself. Any questions in the chatting? Sheikh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I knew that you couldn't really raise up your hands. I, I knew it. Did you know how to raise up your hands? Yes, please. But um, there was somebody else asking a question, so I could not ask my question. We're I'm asking who can you raise your hand. Can you raise your hand? Show me, please. Can you raise your hand? No problem. <laughs> no problem, Sheikh. That's uh, good. Uh, is that all right to you? Yes. If can you see done that, you done that. Okay. The brother would have clicked you straight okay. away. Can I come on? Oh, okay, then, Sheikh. Please block everybody except for him. Yeah, Hassan, Hassan, and Hassan Ahmed. Please block everybody except for him. Now. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yes, Sheikh. My question is about the, when you're going to sujud, the legs at the back, do they meant to be together or they meant to be separate? The legs. Yeah, are your feet are meant to be together or you don't have to put them together or you have to separate? So let's just them. apply what you are thinking. <laughs> It will not work. You're saying to me, okay, so my, when I'm going to be a sujood, I'm going to be like this? <laughs> oh, no, no, not like that, Sheikh. When the, when the toes, when you're bending your toes down, yeah, and then uh, do you put them together when you're in sujood? We said that. These are together. We said that. We said <laughs> together. We said it like this. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, what okay. does mean in the front? In the front like that, they're not like this. Okay. You, you can't you can't sit down like this properly. You can't, you're gonna fall. <laughs> All right, so, like this. Okay. Okay, I missed the other part. You know, before I didn't. Yeah, yeah, no problem, Michelle. No problem. <laughs> Shit, I want to, I want you to interact. It's like about him. Okay, mute him, please. Straight away, Hassan. And uh, let's go to somebody else. Unmute yourself, brother, and ask the question. Any person. Sheikh Ishaq. Tafal. Marhaban, Sheikh. Kif halak. Alhamdulillah. Tawqiyah, bida tawqiyah? A tawqiyah, wad. Tawqiyah, kan jameel, Sheikh, mashallah. Tayyib. Khair, inshallah. Tayyib, any suggestion, any question you want? I was asking Sheikh the, the Suhoor Ain. Have you seen my question uh, upon oh, WhatsApp today? No, I did not. Go ahead. What is that question? The question for in our mosque, we don't put yeah, uh, the end of the Suhoor, just we put the Salatul Fajr time. So the people asking us here why we don't have the, the end of the Suhoor. Uh, you mean, you mean so, time for Imsak? Time for Imsak. Ah, imsak means abstaining from food. Yeah. Okay. That so is can... that is a bid'ah 
which is being done in the class in our masajid, not anymore, which is about 20 minutes to half an hour before Fajr time, they will put you a time that you should not eat food. Subhanallah. Okay. They say this is out of precaution. Out of precaution. We have to understand, uh, mute everybody please. We have to understand that when we talk about precautionary measures, it has to be built upon this precautionary measure, something which is common sense. Not because of going extreme. Going extreme is called tanattu'a. Tanattu'a in Arabic, in, in the hadith of the Prophet, halaka al mutanattu'un. Mutanattu'un are the ones who go extreme. They are destroyed. They're gone. They're finished. They are, they're, 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 they're finished. Halaka al mutanattu'un. Ala halaka al mutanattu'un. What is tanattu'un? It goes extreme. I'll give you an example. Regarding Ramallah. Let's say, for example, yesterday. Yesterday was the 30th of Sha'ban. So this person, we did not cite him inside the mall. He says, this person, he says, let me fast yesterday, which is Thursday. Let me fast yesterday. In case it could be, okay, Ramadan. So maybe you're mistaken with the sighting. But make an extra day. That is prohibited. This is Tanatta, which has no basis and foundation. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, Sawmukum yawma tasumun. Your fast is when everybody fasts. Wa fitrukum yawma tufutirun. And your Eid al-Iftar, it will be exactly the same when everybody makes Eid al-Iftar. And wa abhaakum yawma tudhuun. And your abha, day, the stance of Dhul Hijjah, when you sacrifice, is the same when everybody does so. It is not. Here, the Islam allows you to have your own Ramadan, and own Eid al-Iftar and all of here. Imagine somebody is going to the Eid Labbaika, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, and there's nobody. What? What's, what's wrong with you, brother? Oh, well, I'm doing Eid. But Eid, brother, hasn't been shown. Eid is actually tomorrow. Or the Eid was yesterday, and he's doing his own Eid the following day. SubhanAllah. So we, we, even if you've seen that moon with your own eyes, that tomorrow is Ramadan, let's say Thursday, al Khamis. But the court and the Muslim did not take what you're citing. You're not allowed to make your own Ramadan. You have to skip that and you say, Khalas. Even I saw it, well, 100% I saw it, but I can't. Unless you are in a, in a place which is nobody there and you are not in communication with anybody. So you do your own Ramadan, Khalas, on your own. But if you are with the people, you have to be with the people. So this is called Tanatta. This is called Tanatta. Has no foundation. Same thing here with making abstaining. We know that the Fajr Adhan still in itself, in itself, the Adhan is not even correct. There's a precautionary period in it. There's a precautionary time in it, subhanAllah. Uh, so we find, for example, the Masajid and the Fajr, they differ in this country. They differ so much. In our countries, the Fajr itself is about at least 15 minutes before Fajr. At least in Sheikh al-Albani's place, where you used to see it, 17 minutes before the Fajr time. The Adhan of the Fajr. So we have Adhan of the Fajr before the Fajr, and we have the time of Imsak, of saying from the moon, even before the time of the Fajr, subhanAllah, we are saying about, about almost an hour before the real Fajr. This is, this is against the hadith of the Prophet of Allah. La tazalu ummati bi khair ma akharat sahura. My ummah is upon triumph, upon victory, upon happiness. Upon all these things which are good, prosperity, as long as they delay the pre dawn meal. But these guys, they want to bring it forward. Earlier. SubhanAllah. Bring it earlier. Backwards. What, what, what should you do that when we know the Fajr prayer, the Fajr Adhan still? Yes, you should take precautionary if you didn't know. But Alhamdulillah, we know. Alhamdulillah, if you didn't know, oh, my Fajr, well, I'm not sure. So I will take precautionary for my uh, iftar. And I take precautionary for my salah. How? I don't have any, uh, I don't, the, 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 the clouds there, I can't see anything. There is no timetable, there's no massage. There's, I will take precautionary. So I will abstain before because I can't see the fajr, for example. And then because there's lots of prayer, I will do that. But for the prayer, I will delay so that I make sure that my prayer is on time. Precautionary, when we know the times and everything, we've got everything there. SubhanAllah. Right. 
Now I looked yesterday at the Fajr. Uh, because I haven't had some of the timetable. You are in Northampton, you are higher than us in altitude than, for example, in London, we are based here. If I ask you now, okay, what time is your Adhan of Al Fajr? Please. According to your today, timetable. Our Fajr time today was uh, 4.02. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, in Northampton, okay, that's synchronized with my Fajr as well. Your Fajr is 402, okay. Do you yourself yes. see light Fajr when you go out 402? No. It's dark. It's really dark, dark, yes. Very dark, okay. <laughs> Very dark, absolutely, yes. I checked it. I know. Okay. What you need to do now, we don't want to uh, make the people go crazy here. We tell them now, 4.02 4 is the time when you stop food. But do not pray until it is 4.20. Add 18 minutes at least, or 20 minutes to your timetable. Your Fajr, according to what I have here in front of me, is 419. 419. Okay? But you stick to the timetable, but in terms of prayer, don't pray 402. Eight, 18 minutes. That's what we do in our country. Our Fajr exactly 17, 18 minutes before the real Fajr. That is why the Ministry of Endowments, because they do this calculation about the sun degree, 12 degrees, 30 degrees. They have commanded, uh, they forced the masajid not to do the iqama of the salah until it's half an hour, at least 25 minutes after the adhan. 25 minutes. And still with 25 minutes, alhamdulillah, we could just see the fajr coming. We don't pray on that time. So you guys in Northampton, 402, stop the food. And the Prophet he said the hadith is, if one of you to hear the adhan, while he's got the food, that means the pot in his hand, it doesn't mean he's holding it. It doesn't mean you oh, keep holding it in, in case you've got the adhan so you could drink from it. No, you are eating. And you started the food before the 402. 402 came, for example, the fajr, which is the adhan, still eating. Finish, finish your food, three, four, five minutes, it doesn't matter. As long as you don't really start a new food, please cook, cook, cook me some eggs as well. No, same food that you've got, finish it. Same water cup, drink it. Khalas. That's your drink. Take your satisfaction. Come on, do not put it down. Do not finish. Until you take what your satisfaction is. The only timetable which I've seen, which is good, correct, is in Darby. Darby Masjid, which is a Salafi Masjid, Darby is much higher than you, Northampton. Is higher than us twice, altitude-wise. I'm talking about their fajr. Yesterday, I, that's why I just said to you, yesterday I received the timetable only very late during the night because I'm begging. I've been talking to the imam, and he doesn't listen to me. I know he's busy, so he sent me. Okay, let's just see his timetable. I'm going to show you his timetable, imam. Imam. Abu Hassan. Yes, that's the one. Okay, right. The first day of the Fajr, which is yeah, today, the Fajr, 4.13. You expect him to be what? 3.55, 3.45, because he's higher than you are. It's 4.13. Now, I, my Fajr here, I was looking outside. I stopped yesterday, 4.23. 4.23. Between my time and his time, that's 10 minutes. When I look at the sunset of theirs, it's exactly 10 minutes between us and them as well. Their sunset 
is here, Maghrib 8.23. We have 8.12, 8.13, sorry, 10 minutes, subhanAllah. And I was really happy with that. So I know what you just said, Ya Sheikh uh, uh, Ishaq, that it is dark. There's no night. You did not do the Fajr your own eyes. It's just very dark. So make precaution for your prayer. No problem to stop the food at 4 02. Alhamdulillah. And then tomorrow will be 4 o'clock. And then we go down going earlier and earlier. But your prayer always add 20 minutes at least. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair for that question. Does that help you, Inshallah, Ya Sheikh Ashaq? Jazakumullah khair. Naam, Sheikh. Jazakumullah khair. Is there any Imam with us here from the Imams of the Masjid? Naam, yeah. كلهم هنا أظن. شكرا. I want the Imam to say السلام عليكم. I want to see them. Where are they? Imam. مرحبا. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Which one is Imam? I can't see your face. سيد جعفر ما. سيد جعفر ما. كيف حالك؟ الحمد لله بخير ونعم بالله. I can't hear see you properly. Why why you can't see him properly? Why? You can't see me, sir. I could say, hang on a second. Ah, we could look different without the hat. Oh, <laughs> uh, where are you? Uh, where are you? Imam Saab, where are you? Yes, Chef, I will work. You are at work? Yes. Okay, what is the third Imam? I'm in the house, Chef. And the second was the third one. The third one. لا لا second هو الشيخ عبد الحفيد هو موجود هنا كمان. إلا نرى صورته هنا. سلام عليكم شيخ. سلام طارق. هذا عبد الحفيد أي نعم. But what? The other one. The other one. Was it? I didn't see his face. The other one. الشيخ عبد الرزاق. الشيخ عبد الرزاق. إلا كان يقرأ. إلا كان يقرأ هذا. No, but there is a. There is there four. You. Which is his picture is here. And there is a third one which is the glasses. Not, not Abdul Razak, somebody else. Jafar, Jafar. Sheikh Jafar, who is the one who is talking to you now? Where is Sheikh? I didn't see his face. I didn't see him. He was in the work. He was in the work. Oh, my God. Peace be upon you all. Jazakum Allah khairan, Sheikh. Jazakum Allah khairan. Allah is very good, Sheikh. I pray for you, Inshallah. Allah is very good. 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 Somebody had said the world will be after Corona, not the same as it was before Corona. How true this is. Yes, mashallah. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka. Please remember to make your dua. This is now synchronized with two things. Today is Jumu'ah. This is the dua of the Jumu'ah is accepted, which is the last moments of Asr, and plus it is dua of the iftar before Ramadan. Mashallah, best time. Make dua, inshallah. Yes, I love you.